Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be trying to describe the relationship to others. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So, trying to describe the relationship to others, specifically people who haven't been through the cycle. This will be a challenge for you. It will be a challenge for the people that you're communicating with. Because you see, if you haven't gone through the cycle firsthand and you haven't experienced the gaslighting, the stonewalling, triangulation, the smear campaign, rage fits, financial abuse, verbal abuse, being hung up on, being taken for granted, being devalued, watching your health take a hit, your resources take a hit, your relationships become imploded. If you haven't done that through a period of time, you can read all the books you want to and you can watch all the videos, but you can't put yourself in our shoes for one day. You don't know what it's like to be inside of our minds who have been abused by the narcissistic individual. Now again, I want to share something. My hope is that nobody ever went through narcissistic abusive cycle, the narcissistic abusive cycle, but that's not reality. Reality is many of us here in the community and on the channel have experienced that. Some of us are still unwinding it right now. Some of us, this is the first video they are ever consuming. And for that, I applaud you. Many of us have reached the pinnacle of indifference, the mountaintop of indifference, where we no longer care about the narcissist or anybody from that period of time because we've healed. And we've taken the lifelong learning lessons from the past. We've applied them to present day. We are not predicting the future. We are living in the present moment. And then there are different kinds of people who want to consume the content that I create because they want to become educated and awakened and empowered and enlightened on narcissism. They want to learn firsthand from a person who went through the cycle, which is me. Now, again, I wish I didn't go through it, but I did. And here I am paying it forward each and every day, helping you get stronger, helping you become the third version of yourself and educating and making you understand that this is a real challenge to be in a narcissistic relationship. Then there are the fourth kind of people, which I will give a sliver of time to, the toxic people that are on the channel being imposters, stealing my content, and creating other YouTube channels. Shame on you, you will, be expo uh, you will be revealed and you're gonna be reported, so enough about that. But having said all of these things, there are different kinds of people that want the knowledge, and most of us want the knowledge. We crave the knowledge because we're looking for the answers to the questions that we had when the narcissist would not provide them for us. Post-narcissistic relationship, and even when you were in the relationship, the narcissist many times would not give you answers to questions you had and post relationships specifically, they won't give you closure because they don't want you to heal. They don't want you to understand who they were or are. They don't want you to see behind the mask. And when this is the case, when you finally get that first light bulb moment, then you wrap your head around what narcissism is and how it affected you for a period of time, which was the length of that relationship, or maybe there were other relationships you encountered throughout your life. But when you realize that, then you understand, oh my goodness, this wasn't just me. There are hundreds of millions of us out there but that needle in a haystack is a pivotal part of your life. It is imperative that you take advantage of discovering what narcissism is. Because when you get that needle in a haystack and you practice radical acceptance, meaning you understand and you finally uh, come to terms that that relationship wasn't what you thought it was, it was what it was, which was a toxic, draining, debilitating relationship that was heading to one place, which was Destructionsville, and you were gonna be paying the price for admission. It wouldn't be the narcissist. The narcissist doesn't care about that train ride going to Destructionsville because they are co-piloting that or they are the engineer of that train days in and days out. And they've been on that tra train riding it for decades. And they will continue to do it, even post relationship with you because most likely they have the new supply lined up. But as the thumbnail mentions, and as I share so frequently on the channel, trying to describe the relationship to others, if they haven't gone through the cycle, they can be there for you, they can listen to your words, they can give you a hug and spend time with you and meet up with you and listen to you, and they can be a sounding board, but they will get burned out. If they haven't gone through the cycle, they won't instinctively have the bandwidth to listen to what you're talking about, because to them it is foreign. Perhaps even to them, the person that you are talking to them about, they know a different version of them. Example, let's say you married the narcissist. Well, after the wedding bells had rung and the cake was consumed and the guests had all left, that's when the narcissist usually ramped up the gas pedal of abuse and they began to devalue you because they needed a live-in human punching bag. They needed a sounding board. They needed a walking apology. They needed an unpaid helper, etc. But when that happened, 
the people that were at that wedding, most of them, not all of them, because certainly the, the immediate family member, uh, members or the biological family, the narcissists, they knew that that person was toxic. They just never told you that. And yes, I am unpacking a lot in this video, so stay with it. But when, the, when those wedding bells rang and the guests had gone, you saw a different version of the person, i.e. the narcissist behind closed doors. And you were being gaslit and stonewalled and blame shifted and triangulated, et cetera, for days, weeks, months, maybe even years or decades on end. But your people in the exterior, including your own family members many times or acquaintances or friends or colleagues, they never saw that version of the narcissist. Maybe every once in a while they would see the narcissist mask slip and they would just chalk it up to, oh, they're having a bad day or just a bad experience or they had the rough day at the work or job, etc. But you see, the people that know the narcissist the best, which means the people that spend time with them living in the four walls of the house, are the ones that endure and suffer the toxicity of the relationship the most. It's not the fringe friends, it's not the flying monkeys, it's not the enablers many times, it's the people who are stuck and trapped in the four walls of that house. That's why if you were born into a narcissistic relationship, and one of your parents or both of them were toxic, you know what I'm talking about. Your childhood wasn't what you thought it should have been. It was what it was. And you were probably being groomed to be the scapegoat or, the scapegoat or the golden child, or maybe somewhere in between. But that's not how it should have been. It should have been you were brought up in a loving, stable, healthy household. Again, everyone's childhood is different. We all were brought up different ways. The point is, let's say that you were brought up under in a toxic, challenging household, or flip it. Say you were brought up in a Disney-esque uh, childhood household I mean with your parents were nice to you either way you made a decision somewhere there along life to stand for goodness to do the right thing to have a high level of empathy and to utilize it to take the high road to give to a fault maybe even being a, a people pleaser maybe you didn't have boundaries but you are a good person and you are a good person now and the narcissist knew that that's when they saw you they said to themselves wow this person which was you they have so much to offer and they don't know what narcissism is so I will take advantage of them, I will manipulate them, I will trick them and trap them, and I'll have them existing in that devaluation stage or the narcissistic fog, and I'll have them working for me. But all these things you know, I know, but the people that, or that don't know the narcissist that well, they don't know that, those things. So when you're trying to discuss with them how toxic that relationship was and what it was like to have to be locked in your bathroom or locked in your bedroom for a period of time till the rage fit subsided, or to get a credit card bill and it was three times what you thought it was because the, the credit card that the narcissist was using, you were paying for all that, but they overspent again, or their Amazon addiction, or their other addictions. Who knows what, what you experienced, but what I, what I will tell you is if you're trying to wrap your head around these things and share it with people who haven't gone through the cycle, they're gonna get burned out. They don't have the bandwidth for it. So that is why I suggest so frequently to people, be careful when you're healing and you're processing things. Be careful of who you communicate with about what you went through because you don't want to burn out your immediate family members. You don't want to burn out your friends and your support system. Specifically, if they have your back, if they are there for you when you're, you're at your lowest, these people are rare. So you really need to watch what you say. I'm not saying don't share information with them. I'm saying understand, use your emotional intelligence and understand or your empathy. If they're getting burnt out, this is a clear indication that you need to pull back. That's why we journal. That's why we see a therapist. That's why we meditate. That's why we watch videos. That's why we read. That's why we do anything we possibly can to insulate and protect ourselves because understanding that people will get burned out, it's a fact of the healing path. It happened to me and I'm certain it's happened to you. Other things I wanna share with you, when you are healing and you are making progress, you need to understand that there will be times when the people that you were talking with, they will say to themselves, or say to you, I mean, they'll say, hey, it's been a year. It's been two years. Don't you think you should be over by now? Don't you think you should get out there in the dating pool and try and find love again? Or don't you think you should go pick up your hobbies? Or don't you think you should go join some of the groups you were part of? Maybe it's been six months, maybe it's been nine months, 12 months, a year, half year, three years. But this is not for other people to decide for you. You need to understand this. Nobody, and I mean nobody, should be giving you a timeline on A, when you've healed, B, when you are able and or want to go out and change your life and do things. In other words, step back out into the real world. And C, nobody should be pushing for you to enter relationships if you haven't healed. Now this is a crux, this is a very pivotal part of the video, I hope you understand what I'm sharing with you. Many people that haven't gone through the cycle, and that is most of the planet, many of these people, and, and actually it's not only most of the planet, but many of the people who haven't gone through the cycle and haven't found that needle in haystack, which is narcissistic abuse. Those people, they can't wrap their head around what you're talking about, and they live in what I call the everyday fog. 
It's not the narcissistic fog, it's the everyday fog and they just are keeping up with the Joneses and they just believe that they know and have your best interest at heart. And they are just thinking to themselves, well, after a period of time, all my other friends just jumped back on the horse and they fell in love again and they entered relationships and they joined their hobby groups, etc. That's not what you need to be doing post-narcissistic relationship by another individual suggesting that's what you should be doing. Play that part of the video and play it again. The timeline for your healing will be directly contingent upon how much work you place within yourself, how much of the rumination you process, how much of the reframing you go through, how much of the deep dive on the narcissistic abusive cycle you uncover. You see, there were things that led you to that narcissistic relationship. Maybe it was from your childhood, Maybe it was from former other relationships. Maybe it was because you did have a high level of empathy. Maybe it was because you believed everybody thought like you did or were like-minded or that everybody or most people had your best interest at heart. It could have been all of those things or a combination or so many more. But the point on the healing path is understand when you're sharing or describing to another person what you went through, if they didn't go through it firsthand, they could have read all the books in the world. They could have watched all the videos in the world. They could have done whatever they wanted to. They could have studied this for 500 years. But if they didn't go through it, they may know it in and out, but they can't put themselves in your shoes for a day. They can only regurgitate back to you what they've read or the videos they've watched or the books that they've read. Now that is not saying that they don't have information or education on the cycle. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is those of us who have gone through the cycle and risen through the ashes like a phoenix, and we are now in the third version of ourselves, the strongest, most galvanized, galvanized version of ourselves known to humankind, we speak a language that most people don't speak. I can look just quickly in your eyes and see where you are. You can finish my sentence, I can finish your sentence. You could describe to me, as so many do during one-on-one -on -one sessions that I have with them, they will say, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but, and I'll look at them and I'll just give them a, a face, a pleasant, kind, loving, empathetic face and I'll say, I believe you, I would like to hear it. Share with me, please, this is a safe space. I will say things like that. And then the people I'm working with will be like, wow, he, this guy really gets it. I do get it because I lived it. And it is not a pleasant experience to go through the cycle day in and day out thinking that you are alone when in fact you are not alone, but you're meant to be treated as if you are an, you're isolated on an island all by yourself. That's why the narcissist drives wedges between you and anything that matters to you, which does include your time, money, energy, effort, love, relationships, your health, your status, your belief in yourself, your belief in humanity. They wanna drive a wedge between anything. And when you are on that island and you are in the relationship, you feel isolated, you feel alone, you feel that no one's listening to you because no one is listening to you and you don't have anyone stable or healthy to bounce things off of. This is the narcissistic abusive cycle in a nutshell by design. It is meant to keep you trapped, to keep you devalued, to keep you not believing in yourself, to keep you from healing, to keep you from breaking the trauma bond, etc. And this is what we must do. We must understand that we are the priority, that we do come first, second and third and that we now have a voice and we now have broken or are working towards breaking the trauma bond and that we now can share our experiences and insight with people who are like-minded, with people who have our best interest at heart, with safe spaces, with people who will understand our words. Now these people are few and far between, but they are growing in numbers because each and every day, week, month, and year in the community, there are so many people who have reached the pinnacle of indifference, the mountaintop of indifference, where they no longer care about the narcissist or those people from that period of time because they've done the deep dive, they've had the sleepless nights, they've lost weight, they've gained weight, they've journaled, meditated, etc. They've done everything I thought, and along the way, or sorry, everything I've mentioned, and along the way, they too had burned out people. They burned out their brothers and sisters. They burned out their coworkers. They burned out their friends. They burned out people in their hobbies and communities and organizations they were a part of because these people could not fathom what they were talking about. Because I shared this with you earlier, it's like, the, the person who was trying to describe the narcissistic relationship to a person who had never been through it, it's like they're speaking a foreign language because they are to a person who hasn't gone through it. Now, all of these things I'm mentioning with you, these encompass and incorporate the healing path. During the healing path, specifically if the relationship ended recently, you're gonna be dropped super low. You're gonna be taken on a roller coaster of emotions that will take you up, down, in, out, around and around, left, right, sideways, reverse, forward, everything. You're gonna to have to unpack a lot of things. You're gonna to have to practice radical acceptance. You're gonna to have to consume videos, journal, meditate, watch videos, see a therapist who has gone through the cycle, unfortunately, is my hope. You're gonna to have to do all of these things and one pivotal thing you will have to do, actually two. One is you're gonna to have to slow your life down. 
I mean really slow your life down and process so many things and take a good look around and see who is in your corner and perhaps who isn't in your corner. And of course, at the top of that list will be the narcissist. Now you know that you didn't when you were in that relationship, but they're an easy pick for number one who doesn't have your best interest at heart. Now, the numbers two, three through 20 or whatever number you want, they may be your immediate family members. They may be your friends. They may be your colleagues. It may be your own son or daughter. It, it could be anybody, but you will take stock of these people. That's the natural progression post-narcissistic relationship is first, you have to wrap your head around what narcissism is. Second, you have to find that needle in a haystack or flip one and two inversely. Three, you have to understand that you're gonna burn people out by explaining it to them because they don't know what you're talking about. Fourth, you're, you're gonna need to understand you really are on an island. It's an island built for one. It's called the healing island. It will feel anything like that, believe me. It will feel like you've been left out on the, you, you've been left on the freeway, crumbled up like a sheet of paper, left for dead. That's what it's gonna feel like. That's what I felt like. But the truth is that island for one, or when you're crumbled up on the freeway like a sheet of paper, what you're going to find out is you're gonna to have to really pull yourself back together, slow your life down, process things, understand that relationship almost took you down for the count, but it did not because you're here on the channel. You are here in the community. You're getting stronger. You have gone no contact. You've blocked the narcissist. You've deleted them, removed them, and all flying monkeys and people associated with them. If you haven't done that, you're about to do it because you're now realizing that your energy is priceless, your time is invaluable, your resources are necessary, and the narcissist tried their best to take away everything from you they possibly could, and they achieved this and accomplished it for a period of time, which was the length of the relationship, but they can no longer do that. The reason they can no longer do that is because you are now understanding how valuable you are, and that the narcissist saw your beautiful, bright, shining light, and they tried to extinguish it. They tried to keep you trapped and stuck in the low vibrational quagmire state, where the narcissist exists. They did not want you to ever rise and elevate super high, higher than the sun, the, the stars, and the moon. They did not want you to discover who you were. They did not want you to find your purpose. They did not want you to see behind the mask. And one of the ways they did that was to isolate you when you were in the relationship. Another way was to discard you. If they did discard you, my heart goes out to you. If you ended it yourself, my heart still goes out to you. But again, this is a very lonely journey this thing called post-narcissistic relationship healing. But then again, when you were in the relationship, the relationship was lonely as well. You could have been sitting right on the same couch as the narcissist, but they couldn't have been any further away from you. They would be on one of their three smartphones looking for your replacement, saying, oh, just keep hitting play. I don't really mind, I'll catch up with the movie later. Or they'd be giving you the smirk as they're texting other sources of supply and you ask them, why are you laughing? That wasn't a funny part of the movie. And they'll just look at you and they'll give you that smirk. They won't even open up their mouth. They'll, they know that they were toying with you. They know that they're toying with somebody else right now and they know that they're gonna discard the new supply eventually unless the new supply is wise and strong enough to end it themselves. But then again, the cycle will go on and on and on. The cycle is in a non-stop loop. It is love bomb slash euphoric stage, devaluation stage, which is most of the relationship, discard or ending of it, and potentially a Hoover. And then here we go again. Remember, side note pro tip for those of you who do not know what a Hoover is or for those of you who have been Hoovered, do not ever, and I mean ever, accept a Hoover. That is when the narcissist is trying to draw you back into the relationship for a day, a week, a month, a year, a decade, the rest of your life, or they're just seeing if you will accept the communication with them, which means they're testing the water to see if you've figured out what narcissism is, if you're strong enough to go no contact, if you're still believing in the mask, etc. Basically, if you're gonna give them one more chance. And the narcissist had way too many chances when we were in the relationship with them. They deserve nothing, and I mean nothing now. They don't deserve to see you, to hear of you, to know about you, to even think about you. The whole idea is let the narcissist slither away onto the new supply, let them do what they're doing. That's what they're gonna do anyway. And when you were in that relationship with them, nothing you, don't, you did, and I mean nothing, nothing would have ever been good enough. The narcissist is on a constant quench, quest, searching for in the next new shiny object. They're always looking for something, trying to improve their status or elevate their supply source. This is what they do. It's what they did before they met you. It's what they did when they met you. And it's what they're doing right now with the new supply. They're always comparing constant sources of supply or former sources of supply. And they're always in uh, competition with everybody that they encounter. And one more thing before I close the video, remember, Every narcissistic relationship, every one of them has an expiration date. It's not just yours. It's the new supplies relationship. It's the new, new supply. It's the relationships the narcissist had before they met you. So don't think this was just you. The key to this video is to understand a few things. That describing what you went through to others, most people won't be able to wrap their head around it. Those of us that can, 
You need to lean on us and because we can help you get across that bridge to where you are because we speak your language. When I say we, I mean people that have healed, people who have really practiced radical acceptance, slowed their lives down and understand that they are the priority. They come first, second and third. It's not the people jumping back out on the dating apps or in the dating pool and getting bitten by the narcissist again. It's not the people in, denying, in denial saying that the narcissist was the best thing that they ever encountered. The narcissist was the worst thing all of us encountered. The thing is we believed in the mask. We believed in, in the fool's gold that we had struck. Remember, it was fool's gold, it wasn't real gold. And the narcissist knows that, I know it, and now you know it. So understand the message, don't burn people out. Continue to journal, continue to meditate, continue to watch videos, continue to, to read and to write and to understand that you will get through this and that where you are today is not where you will be in three months, in six months, and in nine months. Where's the narcissist? There's nothing to heal from for the narcissist because the narcissist, all they do is they blame the other partner or the person they were in the relationship with, they fine tune their skills and manipulation and they go on to a new supply. That's why the narcissist cannot grow. That's why they stay stuck in that low vibrational quagmire state and that's why they can never elevate. They need to steal other people's beautiful bright shining lights and positivity and energy and abundance for themselves until these people get kicked to the curb, i.e. discarded or they end it themselves and they put themselves back together. So everyone, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. Remember that. You are not alone. I love you all. God bless you. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Pay this video forward. Pay it to people, perhaps, who you have been trying to communicate with, and maybe they did get burned out. You can share with them what you experienced and that they can understand that perhaps they could have more patience if they haven't already been burned out too far. Because remember, the people that were listening to you, if they did get burned out, most of them had your best interest at heart. They just didn't have the bandwidth to go the distance with you. Maybe they've recharged their battery now. Maybe they've learned a little bit more. Or maybe if you send them this video, they will learn more. Maybe they can have more patience to be there for you until you do get to the pinnacle of indifference. I love you all. God bless you. And I will talk to you tomorrow. All right. Bye, everybody.